Hi guys, welcome back to Square My Fitness TV. Another video and today's top tips to help you lose that troublesome belly fat and how to keep it off long term. Now before we get into today's video, I need you guys to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. So that little red box down below, make sure you hit that so you can stay up to date with all of our latest workout videos and all of our tips. So no matter what time of the year it is, many people are always keen on losing that troublesome belly fat. And the problem is most people don't know how to go about it the right way and they use extreme unsustainable methods and they totally overcomplicate things. Fat loss is achieved much quicker when you have clear direction and your approach is geared towards sustainable dietary changes. If you have a stop-start approach to dieting, or eating better and you yo-yo diet, it's gonna take you so much longer to achieve your goal and it's gonna be unsustainable. Fat loss is achieved by an energy deficit, by consuming less calories than your body needs to maintain your weight. Calories consumed and calories burned. Now throughout this fat loss process, your goal should be to hold on to as much muscle as possible and the majority of your weight loss should come from fat. You should strive to maximize fat loss and to prevent as much muscle loss as possible. So make sure you've got enough protein in your diet. And also with protein, it takes the most energy to digest versus carbs and fat. Now let's get into my first tip and that is protein. Now eating good quality, dense meals, packed full of protein is going to keep you feeling fuller for longer. Eating high quality protein based meals rather than consuming the majority of your calories from carbs is gonna help you slow down your snacking throughout the day. And it will help bring down the overall volume that you eat throughout the day. So how much protein do you need? Generally, you should aim to set yourself up with 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And try to spread your protein out throughout your meals throughout the day. And if you're not used to eating higher base protein meals and you're eating very minimal protein at the moment, aim to gradually increase your protein intake. So don't just go from having five grams to 200 all in one step. Gradually build yourself up. On to tip number two, foods that you can't put down. Another reason people struggle to get the body fat off and keep it off is they're not identifying food that they cannot put down. Food that they cannot stop eating. Food that they hedonistically eat. For many of us, we have those trigger foods that once we start eating, we struggle to stop and put it down. My Achilles heel is sweets. I love sweets. So. I could just sit there and unconsciously just eat sweets while I'm watching TV or whilst I'm doing whatever I am doing. And we all have a trigger food. We all have these foods that we unconsciously eat and we struggle to put down. So what can we do about this? Well, first of all, you need to identify these foods. What are these foods that you just eat throughout the day and you just can't stop eating? Or once you, once you pop, you just can't stop. We need to identify these foods. That's the first step. Then from there, we need to look at either not buying them at all or make it a gradual process. So if you're buying, I don't know, a 500 gram bag of whatever, bring it down to a, a 250 bag. And that way you're just gonna reduce the amount of calories you're eating from that type of food. But that doesn't mean you need to go out that same week and buy another packet. So just make sure you're gradually reducing it. So buy smaller packets, try not to buy, or don't buy them at all. And you can also look for just lower calorie alternatives to what you are having. So if you can have one or two sweets and then put them down and stick with your calorie target, that's a great place to be. But not all of us are quite there at this moment in time. So we need to be clever and have a plan. And that brings me nicely into my next, and that is structured programming and an active lifestyle. Having a training plan will give you so much more direction. Knowing exactly what you need to do how much and when. This is gonna help you overcome a barrier of just not knowing what to do. Normally, at the end of a long day or whenever you plan to work out, if you don't know what exactly you need to do, you're just gonna put it off. So having a plan is gonna help us conquer that. And you should apply that also with your nutrition. So having a plan or a program and some structure to what you're doing. And to adopt a more active lifestyle, this can be done in many ways. It's all down to the individual. You can go for hikes, you can go for walks. There are so many more ways that you can get active. It's all down to you. But what I would say is just think of an activity or doing something that requires the least amount of brain power and that is very easy for you to do. Because the more enjoyable it is, the less excuses you're gonna have. And that way you'll be able to continue and be much more consistent with it. And to get more active, you need to assess 
your daily movement. Think about what you do daily and how you can adapt that slightly to make yourself move a bit more, how to keep your day in motion. So if you have a desk job, can you potentially maybe stand and work for half the day? If you live in an apartment block, could you take the stairs? Could you walk a bit more? These are all little things that are gonna help you improve your neat. And that brings me on nicely to my next point, calories. Creating the right calorie deficit. And for most people, your numbers are off. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm not trying to be harsh, but many people underestimate how much they actually are eating. So there are foods that you think are healthy, and sure, they might be, but it, you can still overeat on healthy foods. So this is why we need to understand how much we're actually eating. So when most people go about trying to reduce their body fat, and they get a bit frustrated when they realize that the scale weight is just not moving. And normally, it's because of what I just previously said, your numbers are off. So if you're guesstimating how much you're eating or how much is in each portion that you consume throughout the day and then your weight's not going down, it's probably because your estimates are off. And another thing you need to be mindful of is if you are getting it right Monday to Friday and then you enjoy yourself a bit more on the weekend and the body fat's not going down, it's probably because you're not budgeting for the weekend. So if you're good Monday to Friday and let's say you need 2,000 calories or 2,300 calories to lose weight, and then the weekend you're having 3,000 calories and then 5,000 calories, that's the reason why the body fat's not going down. That's why your belly fat is not gonna reduce and you're not gonna keep it off. So my quick fix to that is just start by keeping an accurate diary of what you're actually eating. So uh, a food app is a quick and easy way. You can just scan whatever you're doing or you can punch it in really, really quickly. That way you get a more accurate understanding of how much you're actually eating across a seven day period. And then you can work out where you're going wrong and then how you can correct that. So then you can adjust what you're eating or how much you're eating and includes a budget for the weekend so you can still enjoy your weekends if that's what you like to do. And this brings me into my last and final point. It's been emotional guys, I know. So my last tip for you guys today is the final thoughts is finding a way of eating or a plan that, or a method of eating that is just easy for you. Find the easiest method for you that makes you feel the least restrictive. It's all about calories, how much you eat, how much you burn or how much you don't burn. So you need to find a way of eating that fits in with your lifestyle. If it fits in with your lifestyle, you're more likely to stick with it. You won't yo-yo diet, you'll be able to reduce your body fat and you do these things for long enough, it becomes a habit. So that's how you're gonna reduce your body fat and keep it off. So finding a diet or a nutrition plan, a way of eating that fits your lifestyle whilst allowing you to meet all your nutritional targets. So don't worry about all these diets with these fancy names, just stick with the basic. Find something that works best for you, that doesn't make you feel overwhelmed, that allows you to still socialize, still see your friends, and enjoy the foods that you eat but just not too much. Okay guys, I hope you found today's tips useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Please share this video with someone who's on a fat loss journey who will benefit from these tips. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if so. And guys, please subscribe to the channel. So hit that red box below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment below with the type of diet you're following or if you need any help or advice, I'm always happy to help. Drop me your questions below. Till the next time guys, stay safe, see ya.